emails obtained through the Freedom of Information Act. Do I have those here? Freedom of Information Act show that, um, here it is, here are the emails from the White House, Freedom of Information Act. They say, quick, White House, somebody call for the Center American Progress and win lobbyists and, uh, and give us a response to this. Here's the response from the Center for American Progress. White House didn't even know how to answer it, so they had to send out emails. Help! They did. CAP also tried to discredit the study by coming out with its, uh, with its own study, which demonstrated that such investments improve efficiency and conserve energy and have very high rates of return paying for themselves in a relatively short period of time. <laughs> sure. Other CAP uh, issues um, turned out to be Obama issues. The smart grid. This is a great one. In fact, California, they just passed a bill that requires the Public Utilities Commission to develop a plan for the smart grid. Isn't that great? Center for American Progress wants it. Now California has it. What's really great is you can't get out of the smart grid now. Good to be in California, isn't it? Financial regulation. Uh, Center for American Progress says federal regulators should be allowed to seize failing financial institutions. The House bill, regulators would have the power to stop banks on a case-by-case -case basis from risky activities. Isn't that weird? You know who else has said that? Soros. He suggested the president should have nationalized the banks. Here they are. Are you satisfied with the job Barack Obama has done? Uh, no, I'm not satisfied. No. He should have uh, compulsorily replaced the capital that was lost. Which in effect uh, would have been nationalizing the banks. This is what they call nationalizing the banks. Hmm. This is what they call, uh, in my uh, circles, uh, where we all uh, gathered around uh, conference room tables, uh, people think we wear dark hoods and have candles around us. That's uh, ridiculous. Uh, uh, we're all naked at the time. But this is what we call uh, uh, nationalizing the banks. Oh, thank you for talking down to me, George. Last but not least, Center for American Progress promoted a spending bill that would jumpstart the economy. We all know what happened there, huh? And now we know the Apollo Alliance wrote the stimulus bill. It's no surprise, you ready? <laughs> You're going to love this one, that John Podesta sits on the board for Center for American Progress and the Apollo Alliance. It's a small world after all. So you can see the policies and the plan of action are near mirror images. Isn't it great? But don't forget, the man at the center of all of this, George Soros, can make billions of dollars. You won't be able to. You're going to get screwed in the deal, but he can. And he's working hard on putting a new system together for you. The great thing is the administration is helping him out. So far, it looks like they're willing to play ball, and they're doing it. But it goes deeper still. CAP's founder, John Podesta, has a brother named Tony Podesta. Remember I told you Tony Podesta? What does Tony Podesta do for BP? Well, I want to show you this document. This is fantastic. Here it is. This is the lobbying report. I'm only showing you all of this stuff because I'm so sick and tired of people saying, Glenn Beck, he doesn't have any facts. This is the lobbying report right here. <sighs> Tony and John got together and they started a lobbying company. Now, Tony just happens to be the lobbyist for BP. Okay? <laughs> now, this is weird because he's helping coordinate BP and John is helping coordinate the attack on BP and their brothers in a company that they both formed. It's almost like there might be a conflict of interest here. I'm trying really hard not to believe that this whole response to the oil spill is some sort of scripted progressive horror show here. But the more you find out, it's almost like there might have been a deal before BP. Why talk to the CEO? You didn't need to. John could just call up Tony. Tony could call John. George could set the deal, and Obama would execute it. Oh, I shouldn't say execution, should I? I'm just saying. Tony Podesta has more than one client. 
You ready? NBC Universal. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold it. Who owns NBC Universal? <gasps> GE. Wait a minute. Wait a minute! This is starting to make sense! Who owns the smart grid technology that I just told you about in California? GE! Isn't that weird? Back to the Center for American Progress, again. This president either has A, a lot of connections in real spooky and dark places, or it's the saddest story I've ever heard. Because every time we start to look into President Obama, we either find a Marxist, a communist, or somebody a part of Crime Inc. that's screwing you, the taxpayer, to the wall. Oh, I'm betting on it's just hard luck. Oh, he just has 4,000 times the average happenstance connections. It's weird. You're going to have to make the call on that. America, do your own homework because no one else will. It is time for you as a citizen to step to the plate. We've had the free ride. It's time for you to do the homework yourself. Something is wrong here. Everything you see on TV seems to be a puppet show. A puppet show. Tony Podesta, John Podesta, George Soros, Obama, cap and trade, all of it. Hmm. <laughs> Aren't you glad we still have 29 more minutes to continue to cover this? Because, oh, there's more. Lots more. Next. Tomorrow, America heading toward Europe. Find out what our financial future holds and what will be left, if anything, for your kids. Set your DVR. I'm Patty Ann Brown. Breaking news out of New York City. The suspect accused of trying to set off a car bomb in Times Square last month pleaded guilty on all 10 counts against him. Faisal Shahzad told the judge that unless the America leaves Muslim lands, quote, we will be attacking the U.S. There is a new agency to oversee offshore drilling and a new director to head it. Today, former Justice Department Inspector General Michael Bromwich was sworn in at the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, Regulation and Enforcement. And a fire burning northeast of Flagstaff, Arizona, has increased in size. It's now 8,800 acres. For more on these stories, visit foxnews.com. Glenn Beck returns in a moment, but first, Shannon Bream, preview special report. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Patty Ann. Well, the White House slams VP CEO for a yacht race, but says President Obama's golf was okay. And one senator says the president is stalling on border security. Join us at 6 Eastern for special report. Now back to Glenn Beck. Later this week, um, we're going to talk a little bit about immigration. The administration has announced they're going to go after Arizona on the immigration law. We'll talk about that and the amazing video. You can find it at glenbeck.com on Senator Kyle's comments about his one-on-one -on -one meeting with the president on immigration reform. It's stunning. Also, another amazing story from Arizona, where federal lands are now being closed to Americans because of the dangers of, quote, human and drug trafficking along this Mexican border, 80 miles in to our border. And we've closed it. We might as well give that land to Mexico. Oh, I think we, we may have just done that. I showed you last break how strikingly similar the, the ideas from George Soros and the Center for American Progress um, are to the, the agenda items of Barack Obama. Yeah. Yeah, Center for American Progress. Reagan had the Heritage Foundation, but I don't remember the spooky dudes in that. People getting rich off of that one. You have progressive power players standing make a fortune off of the decisions that this administration is pushing. I like to call it Crime Inc., because that's what it is. You're getting screwed in the end. For example, Soros is going to make billions if America cuts back on its offshore drilling operation. America cutting back will leave a gaping void that will likely be filled by an already large producer called Petrobus. Petrobus, one of the top two investments of George Soros. It's the Brazilian, Brazilian oil company. Now, as luck would have it, <laughs> what has the Obama administration done? 
They have announced a six-month moratorium on all offshore drilling, not just deep water, but all offshore drilling, because they hate drilling. The administration has resorted to Crime, Inc. in order to get this moratorium. Man, they, they must really believe in what they preach, right? That the earth gets an ouchie every time we, we, we just take a little needle and break it for some little oil. Oh, it's not nice. 500 feet. Stop it. Because Al Gore and the earth are having hot flashes as a temperature. All right. No drilling. Get off of oil. That's what the president campaigned on. But there must have been a small asterisk next to Obama's campaign promise because the administration is full steam ahead with offshore drilling. With Petrobus in Brazil. 